The T-72 is the most popular main battle tank in the world right now. However, only the successor of the T-64, it has been modernized, upgraded many times. This one is in polished color, so dating back from the uh, uh, Cold War era. And this tank is still very, very efficient thanks to these following upgrading. We shall introduce you to those different technical aspects. The T-72 had, and still has, a crew of three, which represented a major evolution in comparison with the uh, Western tanks of the same period, who had a crew of four. The main gun is a 125 smoothbore one, and the vehicle is also equipped with infrared, uh, light footbore, the driver, gunner and tank commander. Uh, you will see on the side, there will be a pipe, this for the forwarding kit, on the back of the tread, there is the uh, heavy machine gun, uh, what we call a Point 50 anti-aircraft machine gun. As you can see, the driver is in central position, but he has only one periscope, which considerably limits his visibility. It was hard for him to drive in off-road in certain circumstances, in the woods and so on. But for amphibious operation, not amphibious, but fording, I would rather say, he's protected by those kind of plates that's derived water from his hatch, because the only hatch is just moving on a slide. And it's, of course, done open, and it's not good when you have water getting inside the tank. On the front side of the vehicle, there is a possibility to fix a blade. Uh, the blade was not clearly to play the role of a bulldozer, but just to move some earth and then uh, prepare position for the tank, just to protect itself from uh, other tanks. Good afternoon. This tank is, uh, or came to the museum as an exchange. Um, for or with a Polish museum. It's in running condition um, and represents a proper Polish made T72. Um, it's standard in the layout 125 mm main smoothbore gun, coaxial machine gun 7.62 mm, and not fitted here a 12.7 mm anti aircraft gun on the commander's cupola. It has a crew of three. It is the second tank ever built with an automatic loading system. It uses split ammunition, so the ammunition consists of two parts. And um, the layout inside is unusual in that the, uh, the commander and the gunner sit on each side of the tank rather than behind each other. The driver sits in the front, unusual for Soviet-built vehicles in the middle. The older ones always had them on the left side, um, which makes it much easier to drive the vehicles through close and, and narrow areas. From the front, on the left, with a little um, searchlight in front of it, the cupola is the commander seat, and to the right you have the gunner seat. At the front we have, on the right hand side, looking forward, the infrared driver's light, the normal high beam driver's light, with an additional um, cover to really have just a very narrow beam for night driving. On the right of the gun is the main infrared searchlight. It uses a, a metal cover. Underneath, it's really an 800 watt uh, infrared light. So that is the gunner's night vision system behind an armor plate. That is the infrared light for the gunner for the immediate area in front of the tank. That is the combined laser rangefinder day optics and here in the middle you see a split. One side is a bit darker, that's where the laser sits. And then you have the normal periscope for the gunner, several periscopes for the commander, infrared searchlight for the commander, and the main searchlight for the gunner. This small hatch is used to take the snorkel when you do under river or underwater river crossings. And that snorkel extends um, up to three meters, which means overall you can go through water up to five meters deep. You have additional covers for all the air intakes and outlets at the rear. Um, the turret needs to be moved into a specific position. And of course, the snorkel needs to be fitted. Um, and then you would just engage your gyro compass at the front. The driver would zero eyes 
the gyro compass to a position on the other side and he will just keep that compass at zero, just go through the water, fully submerged. On the other side, the gunner will just move the turret and due to the linkages, which you can see at the back, unfortunately only, the spring-loaded covers would open up. You could then, from the inside, unscrew the securing um, nuts for the snorkel. It falls off, you close that little hatch from the inside and you can go straight into battle. The periscope is positioned in such a way that you always see the corners of your tank. And uh, you also have two small periscopes in the actual hatch. Yeah, they're, they're just supporting. And of course, mainly the commander gives directions to the driver as well. It's a normal classical layout. It's the first, no, the second tank, which does have return rollers fitted, which increases the, uh, um, or helps to increase the speed, um, amongst other things. Uh, suspension is on torsion bars all the way around. Um, sprocket at the rear, idle at the front. The engine is rated at about 700 or between 780 and 840 horsepower. It depends on the year when it was made. Maximum speed on the road is about 50 kilometers an hour. Some tanks go a bit faster, but that mainly depends on how confident the driver is. Uh, cross country. Um, Again, it depends on the condition. On dry conditions, you can easily uh, go 20, 25 kilometers an hour. On heavy ground, not more than 10 kilo kilometers an hour. It is effectively a large carousel. Um, it takes 22 rounds and cartridges, and it works a little bit like a, like a lift. So you, you have a cassette in which you have the um, round and the charge on top of each other and the gunner would select the type of round he needs or the commander tells him to, presses a button and then the gun would lock into a certain position, the carousel would rotate, the whole thing, the, the uh, cassette would be lifted up, there is a, a chain which rams in the round and then the charge and then it all goes back down and then the breach is automatically closed and the gun goes back to where the gunner is uh, aiming at. During that whole process, the tank does not have to stop. It can drive or continue to drive. The gunner can actually select new targets. You can rotate the turret during the entire loading process. These attachments uh, take two additional 200 liter uh, fuel drums. Um, they can be either just um, carried with you um, and then refilled with an automatic pump or with an electric pump into the internal fuel tanks or they can be connected directly to the outside fuel tanks and then they would be used in a normal way when you drive. Total capacity fuel-wise is 1600 liters. That's the exhaust. On top of it, a typical Russian design, you have your spare oil, which means even in the coldest winter, your oil is always hot and warm if you need to refill it into the engine. There is a, a switch in the driver's panel and um, then you, they, there is a specific pump which pumps fuel um, out of the fuel tank straight into the uh, ejectors and then it's not burning, it's just condensing and that creates the smoke screen. But it is very heavy on fuel so you don't use it very often. And whilst you're moving backwards, the smoke screen would move in front of the vehicle and it would also uh, impact any, uh, or to a certain degree, um, infrared searchlights and other things.